Well, good morning, everyone. Can you hear me OK without the microphone, or do I need it? OK, great. Uh, I can't tell you how excited I am to be here today. Uh, I live in Cincinnati, Ohio, or just outside of Cincinnati, Ohio. It was about a 21-hour flight, a couple of flights. So jet lagged yesterday, but we still took time to go down to see the bridge, see the opera house, all that kind of stuff. It was a lot of fun. Um, actually, I may be living in Cincinnati right now, but I was actually born in this country, and I grew up in this city, amazingly enough. Down in the thriving metropolis of Kirui, uh, we went down there yesterday, saw my public school that I went to. I know you don't care about any of this, but it's the first time I've, it's only the second time I've been back since 1971. So it was, uh, everything looked really small. You know, when you're a little kid, everything looks really big? Oh, okay, the school is really small. Uh, but it was really fun to go down to Kirui, and uh, I lived at Two Fauna Place, so we went and took pictures of my old house. Whatever, I didn't remember it at all, hardly at all. But So I want you to know, I still carry one of these. All right, so we're good. Uh, I was able to get into the country without any hassle. In fact, it was, it was easier to get into Australia than it will be to get back into the U.S., I can promise you that. When I was 10, we uh, moved to this country. And I grew up in this city, and actually, I do have one of these as well. About nine years ago, we moved to this country, and I live in the thriving metropolis of Dillsboro, Indiana. Do you guys know what a redneck is? <laughs> OK. If you look at redneck in the dictionary, it's a picture of the, way, of the little town where I live. It's about 300 people. They only do left-hand turns around town square, thinking they're all NASCAR drivers. Uh, they all call themselves Bubba and good old boys, and it's, it's an interesting place to live. Um, I do have one of these, and that's not really important to you guys, but when I speak in Washington, D.C., that's pretty important. I don't want to get kicked out any, any, at any point. Um, so one, one caveat a little bit today that as I present to you this morning, uh, I speak mostly Canadian and American now. I don't speak much Australian at all anymore. Uh, in fact, I sat next to a kid, a 20-year-old kid on the plane coming over, and, and he was just yeah, uh, you know, yakking my ear off, and I didn't understand half of what he was saying. I, I felt terrible. Although I've been here now a couple of days, I'm starting to get back into the routine of things. I said to my wife this morning, I think if I, if I, li if I was here for a month, I'd probably go back sounding a lot better than I came. So um, <laughs> if I see something that's confusing, uh, because of any language differences, just come and talk to me later. Because I don't want this to happen. Das hier ist mein Sektor. Das hier ist das wichtigste Gerät des Küstenwächter. Das Gerät für das Überlebensradar. If I use any Americanisms that you don't get today or Canadianism, just, just let's, we'll talk later and we'll, we'll get it all figured out. A little bit about me, if you don't mind. Uh, this is my family. My wife, Teresa, is with me and uh, really glad she doesn't get to travel with me every time I go somewhere. Uh, my son, Jonathan, in, and my daughter, Rebecca. Uh, this is from Christmas a couple of years ago, so we thought we'd get my daughter's boyfriend in the picture. Uh, he's not standing on anything. Um, I'm pretty short, and he's pretty tall. He's six foot nine, and in, in the U.S., he, he played baseball in high school. He had a 90-mile-an-hour fastball, which is pretty good. But he's a fireman, um, and uh, so is my daughter. My daughter is a, a medic and a firefighter. She's going to school full-time for that. My son's in school full-time. He, he finally found himself after, you know, five summers of lifeguarding, so I'm really kind of glad uh, he did that. Um, that's one of my passions. This is another one. And I, I am really, it's kind of cool to see how mo many motorcycles there are around Sydney. Uh, not too many of these. I get to travel on that all over the US, and, and I, I love to ride the motorcycle. I uh, play hockey, because I can move to Canada, so what else do you do, right? Uh, I was pretty, I'm a, not a very good hockey player in Canada, but in Cincinnati, I'm pretty good, so it, it's a lot of fun. And uh, I get to talk a lot about Joomla, and I'm really excited about that. 
we do uh, live training and, uh, I, and online training uh, a lot. So this was at the Joomla World Conference last year as well. Uh, I own a company called Navigate Tomorrow. Uh, it's a small design company, much like some of yours. We, uh, it, I don't do as much with it as I have done in the past. My background uh, in technology started many years ago. I've worked for large for-profits, large non-profits, small non-profits and, and small for-profits as well, uh, and I'm a business owner. So I think I have a perspective, or at least I try to have a perspective of where most of you are coming from, which I want to stop at this point and just ask for a minute. How many of you are developers? You would call yourself a Joomla developer. Okay, oh, okay, great. How about a Joomla site builder integrator type person? Okay, that's what I kind of would have expected. Uh, anybody in the room has no clue what Joomla is, you don't know how you got in here this morning. <laughs> okay, two, thank you very much. Glad to have you here. Um, okay, th and that's what I would have expected today, So, and that's great. Uh, I'll, I'm going to try and uh, make sure my remarks hit both main groups that are here this morning. I've probably built around 200 sites in Joomla, starting with Joomla 1, like some of you, all the way up to we just released a new site a couple of weeks ago. I also work for OS Training, and this is the last you'll hear about them. We do online training, much like Richard does, and uh, I'm a huge fan of what Richard is doing. Uh, I've done about 450 of the online lessons at OS Training. I do mostly, uh, I've done the HTML course, the Joomla courses, and I do Drupal as well because we do all three, WordPress, Joomla, and Drupal. Uh, part of my uh, background is all three CMSs. And so I'm not going to talk about the others today, obviously, but I have a little bit of that in my background. Uh, before we really get started, though, let me just share with you uh, a little message. Oops, sorry. <laughs> a message from our uh, president, Sarah Watts. Uh, she uh, wanted to convey to you this morning uh, that uh, she hopes you have a great day, and uh, she is uh, pretty excited. She's over at the Grace Hopper Conference right now. I think there's 4,000... 8,000, thank you, 8,000 uh, women technologists there. Uh, as a male who's spoken to groups of mostly women, that would scare me to death. But uh, they're having a great time, and uh, it's going well. So as we get started today, uh, I'd like to watch just this quick video to introduce our, the idea of our Joomla State of the Union this morning. <laughs> I'm not. You guys can feel free to dance. But I uh, do want to talk about the Joomla State of the Union this morning. And I don't want to pull the wool over your eyes. It's awesome. But it's also not awesome. So I'm going to talk to you this morning about what I think is really going well and great in the Joomla Union, as it were. And some things that I think we need to improve on. And uh, quite frankly, uh, I think there's some good news even in the not awesome news. So let's continue. <coughs> Here's where we're going to go today. We're going to talk quickly about what is Joomla, uh, who is Joomla, how is Joomla doing, the, or how does Joomla or the project itself work, where is Joomla going, and then life is a highway. We need to ride it all day long. So what is Joomla? Well, as most of you know, because you've worked with Joomla for a long enough now, how many, 
How many of you are fairly new to the Joomla project? Is there anybody here who's been using Joomla less than a year? Less than two years? OK, so most of you over three years. So I'm going to go really quickly through this part. It's open source. We know that, right? <laughs> open source software, uh, free. Anybody can use it. You can change it. You can take it and enhance it for your own use. That's the, at its very root, what open source software is. Uh, and that's how Joomla got its start. It was a fork from a thing called Mambo in 2005. Uh, kind of like a Baptist church. Everybody got mad at each other, and they just split. So of course, that doesn't happen here in Australia, I'm sure. It's an American thing, don't worry. Uh, Joomla has won some pretty prestigious awards through the years, and those are up on the screen. And that's what Joomla is. It's an open source project that anybody's free to use, and anybody is free to change as much as they want. Who is Joomla? Well, Joomla is volunteers, people who, nobody, who don't get paid in the project. Nobody gets paid, at, at least at this point. It's made up of primarily volunteers. Uh, Ryan Ozimek, who is the former president of Open Source Matters, said this the other day, open source projects are the result of volunteered gifts coherently assembled by community and leadership. I really like that uh, because it really summarizes what Joomla is and what it tries to be. It's a volunteer effort. We bring our gifts, our experience, and our expertise to the table to build something great that benefits people. And in the long run, or in, in the meantime, hopefully provides a level of income for you and me. Uh, for when I left my last corporate gig, that's how I made my living, making Joomla websites. And I still do it today, like many of you. Uh, but it's open source, volunteers bringing their gifts together coherently, and then a leadership structure that tries to bring focus and development to that project. Uh, these are some of the people involved in Joomla. This is a picture of the Joomla World Conference from 2013. Um, I'm there behind Brian Tiemann's left finger sticking up my, in my ear. And uh, it, was a, it was a lot of fun. I'd encourage you to come to Cancun in a few weeks. To uh, I'm sure you all want to, to come to Cancun in a few weeks and hang out with us at the, at the Joomla World Conference. But uh, nobody is paid at this point in the project. So who is Joomla? Well, Joomla is contributors. This is a chart of the number of contributors over the last number of uh, months. And frankly, this is an encouraging chart. More and more people have been contributing to the project at its core, not extension developers, but at its core, in order to get Joomla 3.3 ready to go. It's the best version of Joomla yet. I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, a lot of, con of contributors, frankly, from all over the world. Uh, there are user groups all over the world. People get together just like you all over the world for user group meetings in that really cool facility we were in last night. Good pizza if you missed it. Uh, there are Joomla days all over the world. And this is just one example of what happens on a regular basis uh, in a variety of countries and cities, again, all over the world. Another event for Joomla is J and Beyond, and that's the European uh, major, major event every year. And it is uh, more of a, I, I would characterize this J and Beyond as a more of a geeky technology developer kind of conference, maybe, than, than Joomla World Conference. Uh, they certainly like to um, talk at a higher level uh, in the development sense of things. It's a great conference, it's, uh, again, in different cities around Europe. And then, of course, the Joomla World Conference. So there's a lot of people uh, getting together a lot in, uh, in the Joomla community. It's a great community. Um, I'm involved in the Drupal community as well. And frankly, uh, there are two very different styles of groups of people. Uh, the Joomla community is, is wonderful. Uh, you can make lifelong friends in this community. And, uh, and around a common purpose. It's really neat. So how is Joomla doing? Uh, I get this question a lot. Uh, and so I'm going to try and be honest with you this morning. Uh, it's pretty awesome, actually. There are over 61, almost 61 million downloads of Drupal. Of Drupal, sorry. I've got to stop trying to go back and forth between the communities. There are 61 million downloads of Joomla. That's a lot of downloads. In 
one week just recently, over a quarter million downloads of Joomla 3 alone. Uh, some amazing statistics here. The download rate for Joomla looks like this over the last number of years. Starting in 2011 to now, it basically is a pretty good curve. Uh, this is a significant number. Joomla powers, and I'm going to slide in just a minute about this, Joomla powers about 3% of the web. That's a lot of websites. It's a huge, huge project. And that's awesome. Ah, in fact, here it is. 3% of the web, about 5.5 million websites. Uh, how many of you have done about a million of those? Anybody? Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't you love that contract, right? Yeah, now we're talking. Um, that's a lot of websites. Joomla is huge. It's global. It's massive. And that's awesome. You're a part of a global community that's doing some really amazing things. Uh, going back a number of years, uh, there was, uh, you've heard of, probably heard of Hurricane Katrina in the US. There was a website set up right after Katrina hit to connect families with people who couldn't find people they had lost. It was a Joomla site. That's the kind of thing that is always going on in the Joomla project. Uh, I fly radio controlled airplanes. Anybody else do that? OK, one. Yay. Um, uh, I, so I was looking at, uh, at the um, Model Aeronautics Association of Australia. It's a really nice website. It's powered by Joomla. I'm really sad that none of you fly RC planes. You, you really need to try that. It's exciting to crash anyway. Joomla powers a lot of the web. Uh, Sarah, in a quote a little while ago, said, I want to contribute to something larger than me that's enabling people to make an impact on lives globally and locally, locally and globally. Uh, we have that potential. Uh, every site you build has the potential to make an impact. Do you remember when the iPad first came out and they were showing uh, the commercials with uh, different screens on the iPad and one of them was the Guggenheim Institute? If you're an Apple geek, you might remember that. If you're a PC person, you might just, you know, whatever. Um, but the Guggenheim Institute, it's a Joomla site. And I thought that was really cool that for probably almost a year and a half, almost two years, every single Apple ad for the iPad had a Joomla website on it. How cool is that? Part, guys, we're part of a global, big community. How's the project doing? There's over 490,000 lines of code in Joomla now. Now, that's going to be simplified a little bit in the upcoming days, but that's still a lot of code. Um, I wrote my own CMS in 2000. Has anybody ever tried to do that? OK, a bunch of us, right? Would you ever try and do it again? <laughs> no. Honey, how many hours and days? I mean, I think my children pretty much disowned me because I ignored them at swimming practice and swimming meets because I'd sit there on my laptop the whole time typing while they were swimming. And, uh, building this crazy CMS on my own back in 2000, I'll never do it again. 490,000 line of, lines of code. I don't think any of us want to do that alone. But in a community, we can do that. Joomla is available in 67 languages in 2.5 and 54 currently in 3.x, so 3.3. Uh, there's no other CMS that covers the languages of the world as well as Joomla does. And that's important. See, we speak English. Well, you guys speak Australian. I, I speak Canadian and American. But apparently somewhere in the middle there, it's a language called English. And frankly, most of the world speaks that. But it's a much bigger world, right? It's a huge world. And uh, in fact, I was last night at the event. We were, uh, Therese and I were sitting down talking to Osama from Iraq, who's been here. That was his second user group meeting last night. That's pretty cool. So we were talking about some of the challenges he's had using uh, Joomla and any other CMS through the years. And he's built a number of Joomla sites uh, for, uh, in, in Iraq that supports uh, er the Iraqi people. So let me give you some numbers, because this, I think, is pretty significant. 61 million downloads so far. That's awesome. 645 members, uh, 1,000 members on the forum. That, that's, that's a lot of people. About 3 million forum posts, 8,500 extensions. And if you don't know what extensions are, you get Joomla Core for free, and then you can add on to it. We're going to talk a little bit about that tomorrow in my training session. 34 members on the leadership team, 
230 contributors to uh, the Joomla CMS in the last 12 months alone, and 171 local user groups around the world. Those are big numbers. That's encouraging. That's awesome. The Joomla project is pretty awesome. Well, how does the Joomla project work? Now, I'm not, gonna, I'm not talking about Joomla itself, PHP, MySQL, yada, yada, yada. I'm going to talk about structure for just a minute, because this is a question I get a lot. Most people who use Joomla have no clue how Joomla works from a project perspective. I know I didn't, not for a long time. I just used Joomla, right? Who cares how it works? Just keep giving me the good stuff. I'm OK with that. Well, let me just share with you for a minute how it works. There are three organized and decentralized teams at this point. There's the PLT, the production leadership team, the CLT, which is the people or the community leadership team, and then there's Open Source Matters or OSM, and I'm the vice president this year of OSM. OSM manages the legal and financial aspects of the project. We don't do code, we don't do events. Uh, events and things are managed by uh, the CLT, code is managed by the PLT. The production leadership team, as I mentioned, is all things code. These are the people who get together and make the Joomla software work the way, hopefully, you want it to work. These are the guys and the, and the men and the women that get together and do code sprints and bug squads and, and do things that, you know what, I probably couldn't even do anymore because it's been so long since I've actually hard coded anything. Uh, quality assurance. They coordinate the releases of Joomla. How many of you were pretty frustrated with the last three releases in a week? Anybody? Did you even notice? Yeah, three releases in a week. Uh, you know what? Even Apple makes mistakes. So I figure uh, those guys are entitled to a couple of, uh, of uh, mis miscues every once in a while. Um, all of the innovation that goes into the CMS and the framework comes from the PLT. There's some unbelievably smart people in the PLT. We're very, uh, we're very um, well, I'll use the word blessed, I think, to have some really great minds in the PLT. They work hard, and they're all volunteers. Nobody gets paid. The CLT looks after uh, the, all the directories, the, the Joomla extension directory, the resource directory, all the user groups, community magazine, the events, the forums. And they have a fairly large team that, again, is very decentralized, but they coordinate with one another to get all of these things done. Can you imagine trying to coordinate 171 user Joomla, day, Joomla days like this? Or a Joomla World Conference that brings people from all over the world, and you're doing it in your spare time, right? So the CLT works really hard. Peter, you're a member of the CLT, and uh, appreciate what you do. Uh, appreciate what all of these guys do, um, and uh, work really hard. Right now, as I mentioned, Sarah, the president of OSM, and uh, I think there's three, three of them at Grace Hopper. Maybe two. Okay. Yeah, maybe it's just two. And Ruth, uh, who, is the, who is one of the community chairs uh, for the CLT, they're over at Grace Hopper representing uh, the Joomla project, again, for free. Uh, lastly, Open Source Matters. Open Source Matters handles the legal, the licensing, the trademark, the domains, all of that legal and financial stuff. We manage the budgets for the three teams as well. Um, and I'm going to share with you a couple of pretty exciting things at the, towards the end of the presentation about what's coming up next with, with OSM. Um, any certification and governance things that are going on. Uh, there's a major governance working group right now trying to figure out how to better do the Joomla project. And I can't share much of that with you yet. It's going to come out pretty quickly after the Joomla World Conference, but it's exciting stuff. So um, I don't know why Mike's picture is up there. Sorry about that. This is the, uh, that's why it's up there. This is the group of, uh, from OSM. Mike couldn't make it, so I stole his picture. And I'm not very, I, I'm, I'm not good with Photoshop. So I just, it, no, no, I, I just slapped it on top, eh? Can you tell? Uh, this is the Open Source Matters group. Uh, Sarah's on the left, and uh, Ryan, the former president, is, is next to her. And this is the group that does OSM. Uh, Victor Drover on the right is the treasurer. And uh, again, if you could, Mike Carson couldn't make it, so we, I just threw him in there. This is the entire leadership team that was in uh, Frankfurt, Germany in, what month was that? You remember? May. May. Uh, thank you. And uh, uh, it was a really interesting time. Uh, it, what's that? Yeah. <laughs> it was a 
was a lot of fun. Uh, some really, again, really cool and smart people uh, in that group. Well, where is Joomla going? Now, this is probably the most important question you want to know. Uh, again, for all of you who own businesses, site builders, developers, you always want to know, all right, how's the project really doing? Well, I'm going to give you the good, the bad, and a little bit of the ugly this morning, because I think you deserve it. So you've heard a little bit about how good the project is doing. Uh, 60 million downloads, 5.5 million websites. Those are significant numbers. Joomla 3.3 has is out now. I think it's the best version of Joomla ever. There's a marketing campaign or the little campaign that's talking about do more with Joomla, and I really think that's a good statement. Uh, Joomla is better now than it's ever been. I think the roadmap. If you go to uh, the roadmap at Joomla.org, uh, helps us to see where the PLT hopes to take the project. I will tell you that the next major step in the project is to uncouple some of the least used extensions. Uh, Comlink web links is going away. Uh, thank heavens. Does anybody actually use it? OK, a few of you do. Don't worry. You'll be able to install it again. It's, it's going to come down. If you already have it installed and you're updating your Joomla, it's going to stay in there. When you, but if you download Joomla 3.5 from scratch or 3.4 from scratch, com web links won't be in there, but it'll be an extension that you can install if you still need it. So they're going to start uncoupling it. Somebody's called it Joomla Lite, which is not a very good, I don't think that's a good term. But I do think uncoupling some of the extensions that don't really work or work for the masses is probably a good thing. Uh, so that's just one thing. But in Joomla 3, we saw microdata, more with jQuery, faster page load speeds, which I think is pretty important, uh, cloud storage, and uh, a number of security enhancements in Joomla 3.3. Uh, we've already got versioning now. We've got tags. We've got microdata. And so from even just a search engine optimization perspective, Joomla 3.3 is the best version of Joomla ever. And that's going to keep going. The PLT is committed to growing the project in a, in a really positive way. So that's, that's one thing. Um, this one to me is huge. When Joomla 1.5 went to 2.5, weren't you all happy? OK. I expected a far more of an outcry at that point, but that's OK. You guys are pretty, you know, pretty conservative. I get it. Yeah, I hated it. Uh, how many really enjoyed migrations? None. Good. Because it was painful, right? It was painful. And then we've got the long-term release and the short-term release. Does anybody really understand that? I had to make a video. I put it on YouTube. It got tens of thousands of, of hits just to explain what it meant to have a long-term and a short-term release cycle. Okay, so here's the deal. If you go to the Joomla download page now, it's still going to look like this. This is a screenshot from yesterday morning. I woke up at 2 a.m. jet lagged and you know, still on American time. And so I work from 2 till 5. This is a screenshot from yesterday. And you can download 3.3, which is recommended for new sites, or you can still download 2.5x. Pretty soon, that's going to go away. There will be one version of Joomla, and it's the most recent version of Joomla. That's, yeah, yeah. To me, that's huge, right? No more confusion. Um, I don't know what, you're, what it's like telling your clients that, OK, so we were on 1.5 and we migrated to 2.5. Awesome. Well, now we're on 2.5. Now 3.3 3. 3 is that. We've got we to gotta move again. How many of your clients like to hear that? Yeah, OK. None of mine did either. Um, I do a lot of small nonprofits. That's kind of navigate tomorrow's thing. And none of them wanted to pay. So we ended up doing a bunch of migrations basically for free because we're nice guys. And, and I just didn't want any more 1.5 sites on my servers. Um, so this, at some point, I can't tell you when, but at some point soon, this is going away. They're, they'll, they're, they'll probably still call 3.5 the long-term release, but because that's what they've been talking about all that time. But, but very soon, it'll be one version, 
get the latest version, you'll be good to go. One-click updates. Uh, if you've been following along with one-click updates, they're getting better and better all the time. Um, I don't know if I'll ever say that it, Joomla will always just will always be a one-click update kind of CMS because there will always be extension developers that just don't play ball. Uh, but right now, being able to one-click update the core and a lot of the big extensions, that's huge as well. Another big and oh yeah. Yeah, and, and that's something that I would certainly support. Um, again, right now we've got these three separate teams, so that's something that we would need to send over to the PLT and CLT. Uh, it makes a lot of sense to me. So I'm happy to pass that on for you, but you can feel free to do that as well. Yeah, yeah. Oh, what happened? Oh, really? Sorry. Um, just recently released is demo.joomla.org. We signed a new agreement with SiteGround Hosting. They are now hosting this. You can go online and get a full demo. You can also, if you scroll down on that page, you can also get a 90-minute full, fully featured uh, quick site just to play with. So demo.joomla.org, you can do one of two things, get a free account for uh, 90 days or a 90 minute live trial. And this is really exciting. Also, there is uh, free hosting coming to Joomla. Uh, the announcement is at that link. It's not ready yet. It should be up by November or December. And that will be much like a, uh, a well, basically a fully hosted Joomla install that you can get for almost nothing. There'll be obviously some pretty stringent guidelines towards that but it's pretty exciting. Uh, the resources directory is brand new. And I, if you're not in there, I'd encourage you to get in there. It was just released. You can get your business listed in the official Joomla resource directory. And as that starts to fill up, we're going to see more and more people using it. So this is a big one as well. Uh, the roadmap for Joomla is at that link. And I'd encourage you to read it. Uh, it's subject to change, of course but it's a, a pretty good idea of where Joomla is going. The dates are fuzzy. Don't, don't believe any date, right? That's just silliness. But uh, the roadmap and where we're heading is at that link as well. All right, so Joomla is awesome. But Joomla has got some not awesome things about it. So last night I was talking to Peter. I said, so what's the proper phrase here? Uh, over in America, we say we don't want to snow you. Or that's actually Canada, because we have snow in Canada. Uh, lots of it. I fr <laughs> first time I saw snow, I was in grade six in a portable classroom. It was pretty cool. But anyway, uh, so we're not going to pull the wool over your eyes. There we go. That's very Australian. I told my friends I was going to have as much lamb as I could while I was here. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's been great. Vegemite? OK. Had, my fr had some Vegemite yesterday on toast. It's good to be back, I got to tell you. All right, here are the trends. And if you've been involved in Joomla for very long, this is probably something you've known intuitively. Uh, but let me share it with you in hard data. Uh, and I'm sorry this is so small. I have a chart on the next slide for you. Um, in the history of non-CMS driven websites, I'm going to give you a, I'll, I'm going to upload these slides uh, so you can have them all. Starting in uh, 2011, which is when Drupal 7 was released, just to give you context there, OK? 76.4% of all websites were not CMS driven. By last month, or by this month, that number has dropped to 62%. So 38% of all the websites in the world are driven by content management systems. WordPress, which is number one, has a 23% market share of all websites, not just, uh, not just CMS driven websites, but all the websites in the world. Almost a quarter of the websites in the world are run by WordPress. Excuse me, right. Quick one there. Yeah. I've always wondered about the WordPress figures. WordPress was like started off where they basically hosted, um, people could host their own blogs and everything for nothing. So a large account of that would be blogs that are sitting in dormant in that as well. For Absolutely. Yeah, the numbers, yeah, let's not get too caught up on the numbers because 
Remember, how, what, I don't know what the percentage is realistically, but a gazillion of these things are just sitting there exactly dormant. In fact, I had one <laughs> hostgator sent me an email this week. One of my old WordPress sites was hacked this week because I'd forgotten to update it for nine months. Whoops. So I just deleted it yesterday. Um, Joomla, 3% and Drupal right at about 1.9. So here's what's significant about this. And again, you're absolutely, I don't know your name, sorry. Jeff. Jeff. Jeff is absolutely correct when he says we need to take this with a grain of salt. We have to understand that there's a lot of dormant websites out there. And so we're just looking at numbers that we have available to us, whether they're active or not. I'm just going to pull that down because you know it's going to fall down at some point anyway. I'm going to put it back up. Well, it's... <laughs> Can we edit that out of the video? All right. This is a pretty good graphical illustration of those numbers. So you'll see the line dropping. Basically what this means is Joomla has had a 3% market share across the entire timeline of this graph. but the number of CMS driven sites has grown exponentially and it's not Joomla that's picked them up. Now, is that necessarily, you know, is this a oh, danger Will Robinson moment? Should we jump off the ship? No, not at all. Not at all, but we have to be realistic. So don't let me, don't forget, how many downloads has Joomla had? Yeah, 60 million. 5.5 million websites. So let's keep it in perspective, but this is something we need to at least be aware of. The market share of CMS sites has basically stayed fairly static for the three. Uh, Joomla has dropped a little bit since 2010. That's still, again, a huge number, 8% of all the CMS driven sites, and it is significantly larger than Drupal. Let's remember that too. Uh, the Joomla project is about twice as big as the Drupal project. So again, keep, let's keep that in perspective. I want to share with you something that we've been talking about at the leadership team a little bit, and it's the heart of Joomla that actually was built into the logo, I think by mistake, but it's certainly there. The heart of Joomla is, let me rephrase that. Joomla at its heart is about doing great things with great people uh, and enabling people to make a living, enabling people to make a difference, and to do good. And I don't think we should forget that as we think about the project. And sometimes I think we do. There's a, now this is where, this is where I'm giving you a little glimpse into something that nobody has seen yet. So, this is kind of the fun part about being on OSM. I get to share stuff that I'm not supposed to share. It's really great. There has been uh, a SWOT analysis done. SWOT stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. I can't give you the specifics of it yet because it hasn't been released past the marketing team. But it will be announced very shortly. Uh, major article, all kinds of stuff coming out about it. Let me just share some of the details or some of the um, principles of it, I guess. Joomla's strengths are outstanding. I, I think it's the best CMS out of the box. It's the most robust. I, I can't tell you how much, I, how much time it takes to build a Drupal site versus a Joomla site. If you have a year and a million dollars, we can build a great Drupal site. I don't know too many people that have a year to wait for their new website. But, well, there's some people that do, but it's kind of a long time. Out of the box, nothing is better than Joomla. It's a great strength. The community is one of the great strengths of Joomla. It really is. Uh, many of Joomla's weaknesses come, however, when its strengths are taken to an extreme. Uh, and I find that most outstanding or most obvious when it comes to actually the leadership and the community of the project. I'm going to say a little bit more about that in a minute. And now I'm treading on thin ice. But this is fun because you guys get to hear it. First, nobody else has heard this yet. Um, there is significant opportunity for Joomla, and I really believe that. Uh, the SWOT analysis has, has outlined, I think, six major opportunities for Joomla in the future. And then uh, there are some threats. But the bottom line, uh, this, is, uh, 
This is a great time to be in the Joomla project, and I really believe that. Here's what's coming. There's a brand new marketing team that's been uh, a marketing uh, effort that's underway. The contract will be signed pretty much as soon as I get back from Australia. Uh, this is a major effort. It's a huge budget item this year. And uh, probably one of our biggest struggles as a community is marketing. Again, why? Well, we're all volunteers. Who's got time? And who's got the resources? The project has the resources. And so we are signing a, a pretty big marketing contract uh, after a almost, I think, a nine to 12 month process of uh, vetting the agencies. The Why Joomla initiative, you're going to hear a lot more about that in a little while as well. And this is pretty exciting. Uh, we sat down as the leadership team at J and Beyond and said, why Joomla? Why, why should we use Joomla? And it was really fun to hear some of the responses. So as we started to talk about this, we, we realized that, you know what? This needs to be communicated. And we're not doing a good job of that. There's a, so you're going to hear a lot about that in the next little bit. You're also going to hear a lot about who is Joomla for, or for whom should we use Joomla? And uh, I'm really excited about this. I don't think Joomla can compete necessarily with the bottom feeder type CMSs. And if you're a bottom feeder CMS, I apologize for calling you so. Um, that's not, we're, we're a great CMS. We don't need to compete at that level. In the top 1,000 websites in the world, though, I'm not sure we can compete against Drupal or some of the other CMSs out there either. That's not who we are. That's not who, as a community, I don't think we want to be. Now, it'd be great to get a $10 million contract, uh, but I, I don't see Joomla really competing at that level. Where I do see Joomla competing, I'm going to share with you in just a few minutes. And I know I'm almost out of time, so let me continue. Uh, I mentioned earlier that we are three separate and disorganized, I mean, did I say disorganized? Decentralized teams. Sometimes they kind of look like this when they start to do things. Or when they start to talk, they sound like this guy. It's a big step in your life, and yeah, it's really a great thing. We, for us, it you know, worked out good. At the time when we got married, it, um, I was kind of pressured into it, but I'm, I'm glad I did that. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I'm pressured into getting married. <laughs> Just saying, it was it was a tough time. I didn't really want to get married at the time. What? No, man. I didn't mean it. I love you, but. Wouldn't you love to be able to communicate with your clients that effectively? Yeah. Well, we have three decentralized yet organized teams. There's a, there's, there's a vote coming up at the Joomla World Conference. And we've been doing a lot of work on this. Again, I can't give you all of the details. But it's going to make that chart look something like this. And uh, I'm pretty excited about that. We don't know all the details yet. We don't know how it's going to work out. We don't even know. Well, like I said, we just don't know. But this is something we've been working towards because I believe in two things. Now, I'm going to go out on a limb here. And yes, I'm the Vice President of Open Source Matters, and this is being recorded. I believe, it. I believe the project needs two things. I think we do need a unified leadership structure. We need more accountability for all of the volunteers that work in Joomla. Because sometimes we get volu volunteers who feel underappreciated. They, they slip through the cracks. And a better system of communication, I think, is really necessary. The second thing I think the Joomla project needs is paid management. I said this at the Joomla World Conference last year, and I really believe, I think it's still uh, one of my highest priorities. I don't think we need to pay the leadership structure. Okay, So please get that one 
Let's get that straight. I don't think we elect a president and then pay them 150000 a year. Not what I'm saying. But how about a volunteer coordinator who makes sure that every volunteer gets used the way they want to be used, in the areas they want to be used in, and gets appreciated properly? How about a global event coordinator? I'm just throwing this out at this point. I think some of those things are important. One of my greatest concerns is how we treat one another in the project. Uh, this is kind of a, my pet thing about volunteers, because sometimes we get so caught up in the project, we forget that the people is ju are just as important, and we end up like this. As we think about how we work together in the Joomla project, it's not just about the software, it's not about the code, it's not about the event, it's about the people. You have a great opportunity today to spend time with some of the greatest people in Sydney. And I hope you enjoy that as we go. Because people are not binary. So everyone has strengths and weaknesses, positives and negatives. We shouldn't judge one another until we walk a kilometer in their shoes. That's from Guy Kawasaki in his book Enchantment. So I think volunteers need three things. They need a purpose, the why. They need progress from their contribution. And they need appreciation. So these are some of the things I'd like to see the Joomla project improve on. Um, and so as I kind of bring this to a close today, I, I wanted to give you some of the things I think that are just plain <laughs> awesome in the project. And as a State of the Joomla union address, I think we need to focus in on the awesome stuff. But I also think we need to think about at least some of the non-awesome stuff. And I hope I've at least encouraged you today to think through that, yeah, we're a project with some stuff we've got to work through. So is every project, by the way. You should hear some of the stuff over at Drupal. It's hilarious. But we are. And we have great opportunity. Let me conclude with a little story. When I was 10, as I mentioned earlier, I left Australia. I lived in Kirui. We got on a ship. In fact, it was this ship the SS Orsova, which when I look at that now, I go, holy cow, how did that actually make it across the ocean? <laughs> it's a rust bucket. And it, and it was a tiny, tiny little ship. But we spent five weeks on that thing going up the coast of Australia to Japan. Uh, we did Osaka, Nagasaki, Hong Kong, across to, uh, Hawaii, spent three days there, LA, San Francisco, Vancouver, and then a three-day train trip across Vancouver, uh, across Canada because my mother wouldn't fly. So it was pretty cool for a 10-year-old boy. And I got myself in pretty much every kind of trouble you could think of. The last thing my mom said to me was, when you get on board, do not climb on the railings. Now, you've probably been down to the quay, right, where the ships leave, the international ships. And back in the 60s where, or the early 70s when we left, this was the scene. People would throw streamers across, and as the ship pulled out, the streamers would break, and very symbolic stuff. Well, my nana was over on the other side, and if you think I'm short now, how short do you think I was when I was 10? I was short. <laughs> so what do you think I did? I climbed the railing to see my nana, because I wasn't going to see her for a long time. So I got up onto the railing, and I'm hanging over at my waist, right? I'm just waving at my nana, going, yeah, my nana, my nana, until I felt a very solid flow of air followed up by a really good smack right on the bottom, just about sent me over. I was 10. And we spent five weeks on the ocean, and it changed my life. Life was completely different. Canada is maybe part of the Commonwealth, but it's different. There's snow. <laughs> There's Canadians. There's hockey. All good stuff. 
The Joomla project is 10 years old next year. As much as a transition for me moving to, us, to Canada was when I was 10, I think the Joomla project is going to see some transitions in the next year. I think you can be part of that. I think you can be part of a great community that helps the project really grow. <coughs> Um, we have some neat opportunities, and here's one of them. I think Joomla does more than simple content management. It allows small businesses, digital de uh, design agencies, freelancers, and other entrepreneurs to create powerful websites for their clients. This is going to be in an article posted by David Hurley, who is the community, uh, community development manager for the PLT. That article is being published today, and this is a statement he makes in it, and this is where I think some great opportunity for us in Joomla resides. So, State of the Union. Joomla is awesome. I think the project is awesome. I'm not just saying that because I'm the Vice President of OSM. I really believe that. I've been involved in it since almost the beginning. And I think our best days are ahead of us. I think we've got some big issues to deal with, to wrestle through. But instead of being crowded out of the space, I think it's time for Joomla to start pushing a little bit. And we're going to see that start to happen. And I hope you're going to be part of that journey. I hope you're really interested in contributing in whatever way you can. And I hope you'll talk to me today about how you're feeling, because that's what I'm here for. I'm not speaking today at all. I'm going to hang out. Uh, and, and I'd like to listen to what you have to say about the project. Uh, and so basically, that's my State of the Joomla Union. Thank you very much. Thank you.